N. Watson Solomon, independent communication consultant and online journalist. He has more than 15 years of experience in journalism which include a decade with the Hindu newspaper. He has rich academic experience and worked as the head of media studies department in Hindustan College of Arts and Science, Chennai. He has conducted several workshops in various institutions, delivered keynote addresses in seminars and chaired sessions in international conferences. He has authored and co-authored several books that include Plain Language in Plain English, Understanding News Media. He specializes in environmental science, eco-literature and media ecology. His areas of interest include chess, poetry and mathematics. Welcome to the UGC series of lectures on environment science. Today's topic is the green density measure. This is an interesting area where we use quantitative measures to look at how green a text can be. Text need not just be books, it can also mean other art compositions, films and so on. Here what we plan to do is, we look at some of these key texts which help us develop the green density measure. One of these is Dr. Nirmal Selvamani's Oikopoetic Method and Tonight 3. The poems of Henry Wordsworth Longfellow, 101 Best Rhymes for Children and Work, Family and Faith, Reviewing Our Values. I would like to give you a brief introduction to this subject. The oikos, which in Greek means habitat, household, is both natural and cultural. As habitat, it is natural and as household, it is cultural. From the oikos, we get terms such as ecology, economy and ecumenism. A green text is ecocentric. It is an attempt to express the relationships among the sacred, the human and the nature in an oikos. An eco poem is the wisdom of understanding the human and the sacred text. So, land and season are first principles of any text. But how green can a text be? That is the most important question we have here. This conceptual paper proposes a formula to evaluate the green density of any text. The natural, cultural and spiritual dimensions of life may be coded with these letters, the capital N, the capital C and capital S respectively. Any text is bound to express at least one of these dimensions. It is also possible that any one of these dimensions may be absent. We have seven possible combinations. Number one, capital N text, capital C text, S text, capital N, capital C text, capital N, capital S text, capital C, capital S text and capital N, capital C, capital S text. Epics like the Mahabharata and the Ramayana invariably deal with all three dimensions. The same may be said of uh, other epics like Milton's Paradise Lost and Spencer's Fairy Queen. Short stories are usually C texts and hymns S texts. Here we need to remember that C stands for culture and S stands for the sacred. Now it is possible to go further and introduce subtypes. If we reserve N, C and S the capital letters only for principal dimensions then the small n, the small c and small s may be used to indicate subsidiary dimensions. For example, an NCS text may be of the following subtypes. Only the small n is there as a part of this NCS text and then here we have a small c or a small s. And it is also possible that we can have only a capital S whereas the n and c are small or a small n and a small s with a capital C or a capital N followed by small c and small s. And also none of these three dimensions may be essential to a text in which case we call it the small n, small c and small s text. This means that a text can deal with nature, culture and the sacred but for that particular text the nature, culture and the sacred are not very important. Now we will have a brief look at what we call green grammar. There are three types of nouns or pronouns. 
some of these we call green some of these we call human and some of these we call cultural a green noun names all natural things a human noun all homo sapiens that is we human beings and a cultural noun all products of human endeavors the type of pronoun is determined by the type of noun i think i need to explain a few things here we have a shorthand we use capital g and capital n for green noun this is just a shorthand so that when we look at a text we don't have to spell these words out you have gp green pronoun hn human noun hp human pronoun cn culture noun cp culture pronoun in schools we have been taught what a noun and a pronoun are but here these nouns and pronouns are divided further into green and non green types we need to remember that it is the context that determines the type of noun or pronoun look at the opening lines of rudyard kipling's the secret of machines we were taken from the o bed and the mine we were melted in the furnace and the pit we were cast and wrought and hammered to design we were cut and filed and tooled and gauged to fit i repeat we were taken from the o bed and the mine we were melted in the furnace and the pit we were cast and wrought and hammered to design we were cut and filed and tooled and gauged to fit here the pronoun we is obviously not a human pronoun generally we think that when we use the word we the we stands for the human being but in poetry all creatures can talk in this particular poem it is actually the machine that is doing the talking so this we in this particular poem here we have four we's and all the four we's stand for a culture pronoun though the machines have been personified now look at the opening line of john keats endymion a thing of beauty is a joy forever a thing of beauty is a joy forever a thing of beauty is a joy forever we can repeat this line over and over again maybe for half an hour or one hour it's such a beautiful line in this particular line you have here there are three nouns thing beauty and joy our problem is to identify what these nouns are being very abstract they pose a problem in this particular context i think that thing and beauty are cns and joy a hn now what is a cn a cn is a culture noun and what is a hn a hn is a human noun let us not forget this here is another example now let us look at a short poem of w b yeats he wishes for the clothes of heaven had i the heavens embroidered clothes and wrought with golden and silver light the blue and the dim and the dark clothes of night and light and the half light i would spread the clothes under your feet but i being poor have only my dreams i spread my dreams under your feet tread softly because you tread on my dreams so this is a beautiful poem now what we are going to do is we are going to identify the nouns the pronouns and see whether they are green human or culture here i have arranged a list of nouns and pronouns the i in the poem is a human pronoun because it is a human being who is doing the talking the heavens and clouds they may be considered as green nouns as they refer to the skies you know skies constitute one of the five elements light again is a green noun clouds is a green noun though clouds are really cultural because it is we human beings who make the clouds but in this particular context this clouds is a green noun because it refers to the skies and skies you know is a green noun night and light and half light are all green noun because they are all natural i is a human pronoun clouds again we have seen is a green noun your is a human pronoun feet is a human noun i is a human pronoun my is a human pronoun dreams is a cultural noun i is a human pronoun my is a human pronoun dreams is a cultural noun your is a human pronoun feet is a human noun 
you is a human pronoun, my is a human pronoun, dreams is a cultural noun. Let us just go back and uh, look at all the lines once again. Here as soon as you look at a pronoun, you should be able to say whether it is a human noun or a pronoun. So, here you have night and light and half light, these are all green nouns and then you have dreams. So, what is dreams? Dreams is a cultural noun and so on. So, once we are able to identify the human pronoun, the green noun and the cultural noun, we are in a position to calculate the green density measure and the formula is very simple. In this poem, the numbers are human pronoun is 10, human noun is equal to 2, green noun is 8 and culture noun is 3. Eighth poem is an small n small c text. The sacred element is not there and in this particular poem, we are not talking about nature and we are not talking about culture, but we are talking about human beings. Therefore, it is a small n and small c text. The cloth though a culture noun operates as metaphor for the beautiful skies that lie spread like a garment woven with light and half light. Hence, it becomes a green noun. So, here we are ready to discuss the green density measure. How green can a text be? If g and p is the number of green nouns and green pronouns, t and p the total number of nouns and pronouns and h and p the number of human nouns and human pronouns, then g d m is equal to g n p divided by t n p minus h n p into 100. The reason why we subtract human nouns and pronouns from t and p is that the human belongs to both habitat and household. A short explanation about this human nouns and pronouns, it is because human beings are part of nature as well as culture. So, when we count these human nouns, then we will not be able to really get whether it is a green density measure or not. So, once we eliminate the human nouns from the scheme, then we can easily calculate the green density measure. The reason why we subtract human nouns and pronouns from T and P is that the human belongs to both habitat and household. Since a human noun can be thought of as G n or C n and a human pronoun as G p or C p, we need to leave H n p out of the reckoning, which I have already explained. Please note that the formula does not include C n p, the total number of culture, nouns or pronouns. Also note that if H n p equals T n p, then G d m cannot be calculated. Why? Because T n p minus H n p will be equal to 0 and you know anything divided by 0, we do not get an answer, it tends to infinity. So, H n p and T n p cannot be equal. If they are equal, then you will have to say that we cannot calculate the G d m. The G d m is a scale of 0 to 100. If we apply this formula to 8's poem, we get G d m is equal to 8 divided by 23 minus 12 multiplied by 100, which is equal to 8 divided by 11 multi multiplied by 100, which is equal to 72.72. Now, this is the green density measure of 8's poem. Now, we cannot stop here, we will have to go further and look at the attitude scale. A text may have a number of green nouns and yet, suppose you have a score of 85.72 or something we cannot say that uh, the density is very high mainly because there may be an attitudinal shift. The person who deals with nature may not really appreciate it. So, we will have to look at what a person's attitude is in a particular text. We should first identify the type of text before applying the G D M. The formula does not give any indication of the person's attitude. The type of text whether C S text or any other type also does not indicate attitude, but the identification of type indicates the presence or absence of members of the triadic oikos and it is left to us to judge from the context of the text, the attitude of the persona to nature. A word about this triadic oikos, the triadic oikos consists of nature, culture and the sacred. We may designate this attitude as G d m positive, G d m neutral 
or GDM negative as the case may be. Now we'll have a short break. Welcome back after the break. We look at a nursery rhyme and calculate the green density measure as well as the attitude. Let us look at the following rhyme titled Marvels. If all the seas were one sea, what a great sea that would be. If all the trees were one tree, what a great tree that would be. And if all the axes were one axe, what a great axe that would be. And if all the men were one man, what a great man he would be. And if the great man took the great axe and cut down the great tree and let it fall into the great sea, what a splish splash that would be. So that was a very interesting nursery rhyme. A man takes an axe and cuts down the tree. And the splish splash gives us a great deal of pleasure. How green is this nursery rhyme? Look at the list of nouns and pronouns. You have seas sea, trees, tree, axes, axe, men, man, axe, sea, tree. You will find that there are a number of green nouns, green noun, green noun, almost everything is a green noun, maybe with the exception of axe which is a culture noun. You have men which is a human noun, man, human noun, scene which is a green noun. Now, there are too many green nouns. So, you may think that uh, this text may have a green, great green density, but is that the case? Now, GDM is equal to GNP divided by TNP minus HNP. GNP is the green nouns and pronouns, TNP is the total nouns and pronouns, HNP is the human nouns and pronouns. This multiplied by 100. Therefore, GDM is equal to 7 divided by 16 minus 5 multiplied by 100 which is equal to 7 divided by 11 into 100 is equal to 63.63. This is first class, but though that is a good score, this rhyme is it really a green text? The rhyme is an NC text. The nature does not dominate the text, but culture does. Why? Because we are talking about the axe that brings down the tree celebrating the triumph of the axe over the tree. So, in this poem man is celebrating the axe which is culture and is not actually celebrating the tree which is nature. That is why n is small and c is capital. Hence, GDM is equal to 63.63 negative. We are calling this negative because the human being's attitude towards nature is negative. Now, for a serious application of the green density measure, we just looked at a nursery poem but now we look at Henry Wordsworth Longfellow's Slave's Dream. Most of you would have studied this in school. The Slave's Dream has been one of my favorite poems. We shall measure the GDM for each of its stanzas, but before that I would like to read the poem to you. Beside the ungathered rice he lay, his sickle in his hand, his breast was bare, his matted hair was buried in the sand, again in the mist and shadow of sleep. He saw his native land. Why through the landscape of his dreams the lordly Niger flowed? Beneath the palm trees on the plain, once more a king he strode, and heard the tinkling caravans descend the mountain road. He saw once more his dark eyed queen among her children stand. They clasped his neck, they kissed his cheeks, they held him by the hand. A tear burst from the sleeper's lids and fell into the sand. And then at furious speed he rode along the Niger's bank. His bridal reins were golden chains and with the material clank at each leap he could feel a scabbard of steel smiting his stallion's flank. Before him like a blood red flag the bright flamingos flew. From morn till night he followed the flight over plains where the tamarind grew till he saw the roofs of kaffir huts and the ocean rose to view. At night he heard the lion roar and the hyena scream and the river horse as he crushed the reeds beside some hidden stream and it passed like a glorious roll of drums through the triumph of his dream. The forest with a myriad tongues shouted of liberty 
and the blast of the desert cried aloud with a voice so wild and free that he started in his sleep and smiled at the tempestuous glee. He did not feel the driver's whip nor the burning heat of day, for death had illumined the land of sleep, and his lifeless body lay, a worn out fetter that the soul had broken and thrown away. I would like to read this particular stanza once again. At night he heard the lion roar and the hyena scream, and the river horse as he crushed the reeds beside some hidden stream, and it passed like a glorious roll of drums through the triumph of his dream. Here is a table which lists out all the nouns, the pronouns, and here we will have to do a count. You have uh, in the first column, you have the stanzas 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. You have the greens, nouns and pronoun 5, rise, sand, mist, shadow, sleep and here you have 10, he, his, his hand, his breast, his hair, he, his. I think it is easy for you to look at this. Now, the attitude, we can do it for each of these slides. You have the green density measure, you know the formula, you know what is TNP, you know what is CNP. When you apply the formula, you will get 71.5, 66.4, 150. You will find most of these stanzas, they are all neutral. That is the poet's attitude towards nature is neither antagonistic nor positive. So, it is all neutral. Then you have the other stanzas, stanza 5 which is again neutral which has a very high density of 72.72 and here you have in the sixth stanza, you have a green density measure of 80 which is positive and then the seventh stanza is again positive, it has a very high score of 88.88 and then the eighth stanza is 75 and it is neutral. You will notice that in this particular poem, all the stanzas, the poet's attitude is either neutral or positive, in none of the places it is negative. So, here we will interpret what is the meaning of this particular poem of Henry Wordsworth Longfellow's Slave's Dream, a slave as a dream and in his dream, he is able to unite with his family and find freedom. The slave's dream is an N C S text where C dominates. Here, this particular poem Slave's Dream is not talking about nature and is not talking about sacred, though there is a small tinge to spirituality. It is a culture text. The poem is a non-violent revolt against the institution of slavery. This emotion charged poem tells us that only the body can be enslaved, but not the soul. Compare the mist and shadow of sleep of the first stanza with death had illumined the land of sleep in the final stanza. The slave was taken from dreams of his native land in the mist and shadow of sleep to that dreamless land of eternal rest. The simile of the blood red flag to the flock of flamingos indicates the slave's longing for freedom, which is contrasted with the voices of nature that pass like a glorious roll of drums, that pass like a glorious roll of drums in a tempestuous glee of liberty, in a tempestuous glee of liberty. Though the scores for stanzas 6 and 7 are GDM positive, the poetic attitude to nature in the text is predominantly neutral. The body of the slave had become one with nature, but the soul had broken its fetters and become one with the sacred. The emphasis, however, is on C, which is culture, more precisely on the tragedy of the institution of slavery. To do full justice to the poem, we need to do an oikopoetic analysis, which is a contribution of Dr. Nirmal Selvamani, but for the want of time and space, we shall just dwell on the quantitative implications. The numbers for the whole poem are GNP 44, HNP 49, CNP 16 and TNP 109. Hence, GDM is equal to GNP divided by TNP minus HNP into 100, which is equal to 44 divided by 109 minus 49 multiplied by 100. This reduces to 44 divided by 60 into 100 which is equal to 73.33 neutral. So, for the whole poem, this is high green density measure and the poem is neutral. The green density measure formula may also be applied on paragraphs of a short story or on scenes of a play. In fact, it can be applied on any text to quantitatively indicate green density. Listing out and classifying nouns and pronouns may be an arduous task, but the effort is worth it if we really want 
a scientific base for eco criticism. Now, we have come to the summary part of it. You should not think that the green density measure is only meant for literary text. As I told you in the beginning, you can even analyze films, you can analyze sculpture, you can analyze uh, paintings, you can analyze music, everything can be analyzed using the green density measure. The three dimensions you will have to remember are G, D, M that is green density measure, you will have to remember nature, culture and sacred. A green text is ecocentric. The relationships among the sacred, the human and the nature in the habitat is explored quantitatively. This episode has presented a formula to evaluate what may be called green density measure of any text. The formula involves nouns and pronouns which are classified as green and human. The natural, cultural and spiritual dimensions of life may be coded N, C and S respectively. Any text is bound to express at least one of these dimensions. It is also possible that any one of these dimensions may be absent. Epics invariably deal with all three dimensions. If G and P is the number of green nouns and green pronouns, T and P the total number of nouns and pronouns and H and P the number of human nouns and human pronouns, then G D M is equal to G and P divided by T and P minus H and P multiplied by 100. You need to memorize this formula, commit this into your memory. This formula is then validated with the help of some literary texts. You can also look at some films and try to evaluate this and validate it. Now is the time for a short assignment. This is homework. So, please take this down word by word, syllable by syllable and line by line. Calculate the green density measure of the following text titled the Bodhisattva. I have been a dormant seed, seasoned by showers of spring. I have been a dancing reed with foot rooted in the soil. I have been a caterpillar devouring the freshest leaves. I have been a butterfly fluttering embroidered wings. I have been a chameleon changing color from bark to bark. I have been a swift winged kite hovering over a terrestrial prey. I have been little prince Siddharth nursing a crimson wing of a wounded swan. What you have to do is you have to set up a table. You see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 paragraphs. So, you set up a table and have columns for human nouns and pronouns, green nouns and pronouns, culture nouns and pronouns and a column for the green density measure and another column for the attitude. So, once you are able to do it, once you are able to identify all this, you will be in a position to measure the green density measure. Thank you.